Here's another comment. Appears in my notifications, but didn't quite get through to the video. For some reason, it's username Psycho NWA's comments. <laughs> Had a bit of trouble getting published. Can't think why. Now, this video that I was actually watching is on Sky News. Nationwide anti-vax protests held. In stark contrast to the enthusiasm the eagle has landed. And the commenter was actually talking about this video. It looks like Hugo Talks has got it on. Good channel. I go to it all the time. And with vaccinations on the way, rolling out in many countries around the world, it's now a time for optimism and hope for the future. The funny thing about that speech is that it was played right around the world. World media shocked by us of a disgrace. Ben here, he wasn't happy. Stubbs the over. He's been bred to Bewick fans who don't want the poison jabbed into him. That's disgraceful. Now that's interesting because they sort of paint anti, well, people that are against this Pfizer thing and any, any COVID vaccine as fringe dwelling, you know, riffraff, uh, conspiracy theorists. But, you know, this is at the Australian Open. Got to be a bit cashed up to get it here, I'd say. The tickets wouldn't be cheap or even at least have some connections. And people are booing the vaccine openly. See, this is just their first rollout and they're monitoring everything, seeing that no one was to take it. Carl Stefanovic was interviewing someone this morning and they said, oh, they're a bit concerned. They said that less than half of um, some vaccination hub invitations over <laughs> didn't show up or didn't respond but well, i mean what's less than half zero is less than half it's no, they're booing at the australian open no, okay guy guy i'm in my street so i know him pretty well and uh i thought he worked in a part like one of those first responders and i said to him he's out in the front yard i said are oh, you uh you get the vax he goes no and I said, oh, I thought, you know, you were working down there at the airport. And he goes, no, no, I've moved. I said, oh, okay. So you're not going to take it anyway? And he goes, shit, no. And he said, um, a lot of his ex-colleagues that are still in that department, they don't want to take it. No one wants to take this thing. This article a few days ago, coronavirus CMO, Paul Kelly says, vaccine hes hesitancy levels are concerning. I'll tell him what's concerning. is the hesitancy of the TGA, the government, at giving this Pfizer thing full approval because provisional approval, according to this article by the Melbourne Vaccine Education Centre, see, they don't have emergency use authorisation mechanism. Now, in this same article, straight after they mention that the DGA doesn't have emergency use authorisation, they mention that system over in America. So, yeah, by association, what they're saying is provisional approval is the same as EUA, under which you cannot sue the government. So that's how hesitant the government is. They're making sure that you can't sue them. While Paul Kelly, as part of the government, is hesitant to approve the Pfizer jab as a vaccine, because it's not a vaccine to start with, he bemoans that we're hesitant. So while people are booing this thing at a major sporting event in Australia, is this story in the Sydney Morning Herald just today, COVID vaccination rollout could be faster than expected. Again, they're, they're, this timeline was already worked out well, last year or the year before, however long ago, they worked it out. But this whole, oh, yeah, we're bringing it forward. Oh, things are going better than expected. Now, they, they just wanted to put it off in the minds of people so they weren't thinking about it too much. Then they're coming at you real thick and real fast. Further on in this article, a joyful premiere. Obviously, she didn't watch the Australian Open or seen the news on it. But anyway, listen to this language. It is the beginning of time. Well, what's that? A great reset. That's what this is about. Going back to life as normal will only occur when the vast majority of the population has the vaccine. So despite protests all over the country and booing at the Australian Open, as far as these policies are concerned, everybody's getting this thing. The vaccine will liberate us all. Those snap decisions by premiers to lock down borders over a handful of cases will be a thing of the past. So they think that their strategy of having their foots on our throats and cops smashing us to the ground and locking us up, that's going to work, which they have to do because people know full well that this virus effect on their health and the health of the nation is just non-existent. You can look at all the statistics and even just with your own observations, it's simply not self-evident. 
So, of course, what's going to happen is stage one, send out the invitation. <laughs> Nobody turns up, less than half, which is virtually zero. And then they're just going to bide their time till the winter flu season comes along. Then you're going to have border closures, school closures. They're going to really hammer us hard like they did in America. They've got all this plan and over in England. That's why I can see, although UK column News said they're not getting the take up, but it looks like they're at least getting some people to take this poison. Whereas middle of summer, nobody's sick. I was looking around, well, why am I taking it? And they haven't really got an excuse to lock down the borders, although, you know, one they can't keep doing it with one case. Eventually people are getting the shits. And indeed, down in Victoria, people were getting the shits. But as far as they're not going to take it anymore, but once once winter comes, that is when a shitstorm is going to really occur. And that's when people, uh, they, they are no longer invitations. They will be people going door to door. They will have everything locked down and they'll say, kids can't go to school, shops can't open until everyone takes this jab and we just got to get through it. Don't take it. Just, I mean, if they want to perpetually lock the whole nation down, we'll let them, what, five years, ten years' time? <laughs> and, you know, it, and the longer this thing goes, see, the, the problem they've got is they have to get this vaccine over the line. Even if they just report it, they'll end up resorting to that if they can't get it. It's because... All that they've done so far, if they just suddenly stop and say, okay, yeah, we're not doing that anymore, no more lockdowns, no more, and we go, well, hang on, the situation's the same, what's changed? And you can then go back, circle back and say, okay, well, you know, we're not going to pay the debt, uh, you know, you owe us all this um, restitution and people need to go to jail. Um, so they need this vaccine. So they can say, no, no, see, the vaccine's changed it. That's why we've changed our policy. But they can't change their policies without a change, without a, something they can point to to justify it. And that's another reason why they're really pushing pushing this poison on everyone as well as, you know, trying to um, affect everyone's RNA. So, all right, soldier on, everyone. That's it for this one.